Okay, Corel Video Studio 6 has just come out and this is going to be a tutorial on whether you should upgrade if you already have 5. Uh, that's subjective to what you want to do, but I'm not sure what I want to do yet, so what I've done so far is I've downloaded the trial version, which unfortunately comes with none of the features you get if you upgrade to Corel Video Studio Ultimate. That's one of the things that bug me a little bit about Corel, but that's the way they do their business. So let's take a peek at just the pro version real quick. They've added some really nice features that are what I thought the program was lacking sorely. I mean, it. Uh, I was actually starting to dislike the program because of its limitations in some of the animation while well, they've pretty well corrected most of that stuff. Anyway, uh, the layouts look the same basically. I mean it's the same old Corel. You're not going to see much difference there. Uh, what's very nice is, let me find something, I'm going to drag this down here. Motion tracking is a really nice feature. That's one of the one of the new things that is really neat. Okay, I'm going to come up here. I'm going to apply motion tracking. Motion tracking just basically follows a spot in the video. This red cursor will pop up. You place this. See the little magnifier. You place this on an area that you want to track. Let's say I want to track right off this gauge. Okay, and you can have multiple track points. Uh, just add another track point, and I'm going to put one up here on this window. Now, basically, what that does is it it places a tracking point on your still image, and you can place a video or a sign or whatever you want onto that tracking point once you have tracked it out. And I've already tested it and the tracking works quite well. Uh, once you apply your tracking, it's applied directly to your video. These placeholders come up by default. I'm, I'm, I just downloaded the thing a little while ago and I don't need these placeholders. I don't know why it placed them. You can delete them. But anyway, make a long story short, there's now tracking points on the video that I could put a sign, men at work, haha, -ha, whatever over here. And I'm going to show you an example of that. What I did was I did it to this video and I wanted to test the accuracy, how well it worked, how well it tracked, to see if it would really hold on to a, a complicated image or whatever. And it seemed to do quite well. I used these crabs. Okay, I'd... now to maintain, to track a crab in this mess is and not lose track of it, to me that it works quite well. So now I'm going to play it for you. See, it doesn't miss that crab, it's staying right with that crab, and there's a crab up here it's following too. But anyway, that's your basic motion tracking. Okay. The one thing that you could never do with the other was, you know, let's just throw this back down here, is if you wanted to, let me just grab this, if you wanted this overlay track to move up to the corner and then down here and change in size and everything, there was no easy way to do that. Well, they've changed that. It's actually very easy to do now. That is, uh, where is that? Uh, oh, uh, do you do customize motion? Okay, that opens up this box. Now, all this is just values of where things are placed in the video. I'm not going to get into all the specifics, but you can move this around, resize it, spin it. I get a hold of it. 
Come on. There we go. I'm running screen recording, which which sucks a little bit of life out of the computer. Anyway, you can add keyframes and keyframe this whole thing to customize everything. Uh, give you an example of what that is. Is I just threw this up. This was this was the one thing that VS5 you couldn't do it, it wasn't set up right and I was actually very discouraged that I couldn't do this the more advanced I got in playing around with video so I'm just gonna show you this real quick see all the different changes everything's going fine and that was nearly impossible with the old Corel okay that's pretty sweet I'm really happy they did that so what I'm trying to do is should I upgrade well I, honestly already I think I should <laughs> but uh, another really nice thing is on your capture now okay the original uh, the original screen capture you couldn't it, I, it was 15 frames per second was all you could record at so it made for a choppy motion type thing it wasn't that good of a recorder now 25 frames or 30 frames okay that's a big step up 30 frames is pretty smooth all right it 30 frames should be plenty uh, Camtasia studio only records at 30 frames as its highest rate so this is a pretty good recorder okay it's nice that they've stepped up to that. Uh, I can't, there, there's a number of things that also are additional with this. One of the things is it can record in 4K, which is really outrageous uh, video quality. But honestly, unless you got a television set that's eight feet big or bigger and supports 4K resolution, uh, I'm not sure that feature means a heck of a lot. What I did do, because I'm being lazy here, uh, okay, this is there. Here's the motion tracking. Here's your customizable motion. Okay, they do some kind of stop motion with directly through your camera now. I've never really worked with the stop motion. I don't know that much about it. I'm not gonna try to expand on that but yeah here's the here's a, a, a demonstration of how much larger pixel wise you are when you get up there but like I say if you don't have a TV that supports it or you don't have equipment that supports it uh, it's not going to do you much good I rendered a very brief uh, little 10 second clip in 4k of a, of a fancy photo just to see how long it would take to render and it takes like four or five times longer to render and I don't have the best of computer but I tell you what if you don't need it uh, this feature is really not going to do you a lot of good unless you've got a camera that supports it and a TV that supports it uh, it's kind of pointless to me but I may change my mind the more I look into it but uh, and you got the subtitle editor I haven't had time to look at uh, enhanced variable speed I haven't looked at it but apparently you can it's easy to variable speed the, the motion and stuff so that's pretty cool and uh, I don't know about any of this other stuff but that's that's the basics of the the new pro and honestly I mean it's only 20 bucks difference you know it's it's either 60 bucks for me to upgrade to this or it's 80 bucks for me to grow to upgrade to ultimate and let's face it ultimate has ultimate has your Boris graffiti and all that kind of good stuff I mean it'd be I've already got graffiti 5 uh, graffiti 6 is supposed to be much nicer and you know Mercalli that's already on 5 this color fast blue no this hand script animation no but 
you know, th these are all things that are already on 5. So really, if you step up to Ultimate, you're going to get the Graffiti 6, which is, you know, that's, it's 5 on version 5, 5.1, I think it is. And, uh, and I, I took a peek at the tutorial for it, and I looked at Grip's tutorial on it, and it's pretty neat. It's it's pretty nice. They they did a good thing there. Anyway, uh, I just wanted to put a little something out there for everybody to take a peek at and throw my two cents in. Now that they've released this, I I'm pretty intrigued, and I will be quite surprised if I don't upgrade. But for now, uh, um, I hope this is giving you a little insight, a little something to think about. And uh, that's all for now.